Hello, in this video tutorial I'm going to explain MovieZoo's animation philosophy, which is direct to don't animate. And in doing so I'd like to give you an overview of how you go about animating. This is an easy tutorial because uh, you just really have to sit and listen. This isn't about doing anything. First of all I'd like to start by explaining the jargon, what direct don't animate means. Traditionally when you come to do character animation you have to work on a frame by frame basis. You make small changes to a model or to a drawing and you record those changes uh, through a camera. MovieZoo doesn't work like that. Instead you have to feel that you're directing characters which are in front of you and are always, they're always alive and breathing and blinking. And instead of having little controls over how their fingers or eyes move, instead what you do is you tell the character or you direct the character as to how you'd like it to act. So you can tell it what mood it's going to be in, and where you'd like it to go, how you'd like it to stand, and all those sorts of things. And this applies to all the things that you can animate in MovieZoo, not just the characters. So I'm going to try and get across two concepts to you. I'm going to try and get, get across the notion of a mood-based animation system, and also to animate in passes. Let's take a look at the second one first, namely animating in passes. Here you can see a picture of a character and around it are all the passes and all the sort of separate items about that character that you can direct in MovieZoo. So you can see that you can direct the character's head and eyes, its dialogue and lips, its animation on the top half, what its arms and body is doing. You can also direct its movement, how it walks around the set. We've got sound effects um, and we also have properties, in other words the character's colour. Now animating in passes means that you can do all of these things separately. In other words, you can make a character, you can decide to direct its head movement and then at a later time you can decide to direct its properties, add some sound effects, then work on its dialogue and lips. And in each of these cases you can do these in any order. You can start with the head, move on to the eyes, go to the movement, or you know any order that you, that you like it to do it in. Animating in passes means that you build up a complicated character performance or character animation by doing lots of little things. Doing all these little um, head movements and eye movements and animation movements and letting them build up one on top of the other. And this is all non-destructive. You can't really overwrite the head movement by putting on some movement by putting on some leg movement and you can't change what you do to the character's colours by then going and doing the dialogue and lips. So all this is meant to be flexible and to give you as much control as possible. Now the other concept I'd like to explain to you right now is one of a mood based animation system. This applies to the characters only. When you when we come to do the video tutorials about animating objects and cameras, then mood doesn't really come into it. But for character animation, mood is a very important concept in MovieZoo. In MovieZoo, you don't have control over the character's limbs as you would in traditional animation. You instead direct the character to be in one of these moods. Happy, sad, angry, scared, evil, wobbly, or fighting. Now for most of these moods you can then select a gradation or the amount of mood that you want to put the character into. We call these idle poses, subtles and strongs. An idling character is one which is not doing anything, it's just standing there or sitting there breathing and blinking. Poses are animations that you can trigger that go alongside conversation so we got a lot of hand movement right there. Subtles and strongs are related to the mood. A subtle happy animation might be a weight shift, the character going from foot to foot, whereas a strong happy animation might be the character laughing. Equally so, a strong angry animation may be the character going into a tantrum. Fighting is a little bit different. We still have the four categories, but instead they're called idle attack, dodge and impact. And you can understand what they do when we come to the fighting tutorial. Finally, before we go to MovieZoo, there's one other thing I'd like to mention about uh, animation. And it's this. Animation in MovieZoo is quite often a two-step process. First of all, you have to prepare the thing that you'd like to animate or direct. And then you physically have to go and direct the character or the object to perform those actions. 
For most things, you prepare and then you direct. And then once you're happy with the performance, you start to move down the pipeline here. You might go to the timeline to tweak the order that events happen and the order that animations happen. You would then go to make your video, which gives you a little AVI file out of MovieZoo. And then finally, you might choose to upload that video straight to YouTube or our website. Anyway, that's enough chat. Let's head over to MovieZoo and I'll show you these principles in practice. Okay, over in MovieZoo, I've got a really simple set created. There's one character in it. You can see he's idling in the happy mood. Big smile on his face. He's breathing and blinking. Now, let's take a look up here. Here are the two menus I was talking about. The Prepare menu and the Direct menu. And the tools underneath each of these are pretty much the same. I'm not going to bother preparing anything for this tutorial. I'm just going to go ahead and direct some character actions because I'd like to get across the notion of how you animate in passes, how you direct in passes. A few things pop up. There will be a box for whatever pass you're in. In this case, it's the character actions, but this could be sound effects or it could be head movement. And the other thing that pops up is our timeline recorder. Now, the important button here is this big record button. And the way that you animate in passes is that you hit record, you hit some of these poses, sound effects, head movements, whatever you've got going on up here. You then hit the stop button if you're happy with that pass. Then you can leave it as is. If you'd want to do a second take, you simply rewind, hit record, and do the whole thing again. So let's give that a go. Let's hit record. We get a countdown. And I'll just trigger some happy and angry poses. And finally, a big wave and stop. If we hit rewind and play, you'll see those three animations that I've just recorded. Now, if I was happy with this at this stage, then fine. If not, I can rewind, hit record, and do a whole lot of different ones. Let's go to some sad stuff. And maybe some scared stuff as well. Now when we stop and rewind you can see that the second pass has completely overwritten all the happy and angry stuff that we did in the first pass. We can scrub to any point in the timeline. So let's go just after he does the fist thing, let's go to here and record something else. Strong happy. And another one, just for good measure. This is completely non-destructive. You can scrub to any point in the timeline timeline, and add on extra animations. If you'd like to see a visual representation of those events that you've just recorded, you go to Tools and Timeline, and for the character selected, you'll see he has a blue actions track the kick up dust, the air punch, the laughing and the clapping that we've all just recorded. Let's close the timeline editor. Okay. Next thing I'd like to say is that we've done a pass. We've done the character actions pass. Let's go to eyes and head. Okay. Let's rewind. Call up the head controller. Hit record. And now you'll see that I can overlay head movement on top of all the body animation that we recorded just a few moments ago. Similarly, I can rewind, I can pick a whole different pass such as character movement. I can hit record. And I can even make a move when he's doing the hand stuff and the head stuff. And stop. And each pass that we make makes this timeline editor a little bit more complicated. You can see here the blue actions still remain, but this time they've been overlaid with blue movement and some red head events. If you're not happy with any of those passes, you can move them in the timeline, adjust them as you see fit, or by using the little bin icon, you can delete, for example, in this case, the movement completely. So that, in MovieZoo, is how you animate in passes. Each of these little menu items right here is a whole separate pass that you can do individually to build up a performance. The next thing I'd like to talk about 
is mood based animation and for this we'll get a fresh character let's delete him and create a new character okay characters in movies who are always in a mood not necessarily a bad mood but they're usually in one of those moods that we mentioned earlier they can either be happy, sad, angry, scared, evil, wobbly or fighting now unfortunately in MovieZoo we can't fit all of those moods onto our user interface so when a character comes loaded let's go to prepare character actions you'll see that she comes preloaded with three pages of moods the kind of uh, turquoise one here is uh, happy we've got the angries red the sads on the blue the fighting on the ye yellow and the scareds on the uh, on the purple when you're in prepare character actions you can customize this deck completely this mood based approach to things carries all the way through movies it carries all the way through the character's movement and how its eyes and head react as well there'll be individual tutorials covering each of these categories so don't worry about uh, about the lack of detail at this stage I'm just giving you an overview so let's clear the timeline recorder and we've done a bit of preparation, we loaded some evil animations, we did some directing, I've shown you a little bit of the timeline for this character. The next thing you would do would be to go to video and make video. Now for this to make sense uh, you'd have to have some sensible cameras set up, you can see that this camera is away off to the side, in fact let's just go and change that right now. Let's bring this camera around and put her in the middle go back to video make video okay so you've done all your animations we've left it in an evil state and we can see everything here when you get to the make video stage you obviously have to pick your options you have to pick um, the format and um, that you'd like the video to be made in and also where you'd like it to be saved there's a whole bunch of jargon in here about codecs and things like that the best place to look for help on codecs and resolutions is on our forums at moviezoo.com I'll clear that right now. The other thing you, that you want to be aware of at this stage is are the start and end markers on the timeline. These two little diamonds and the pink area in between is the actual area that will be captured and made as a movie. So you can set these to whatever you want by dragging them around or by right clicking. Okay at this stage what I'd like to do is I'd like to show you how you go about making the video and actually uploading it um, to our website or to YouTube. So let's actually just go ahead and bring up that make video thing again. Okay, I'm going to set my start and end markers. I'm going to put them really quite close together, just so that this doesn't take ages to render. Um, options, let's set them up properly. In fact, let's uh, let's not bother. Let's just hit make video, and we'll call this Movie Zoo AVI. Now there's a window popped up here, just because I happen to be making an XVID um, video. Okay, recording complete. I can either go to the video joiner or I can just hit OK. I'm just going to hit OK at this point. Now with a video made, Movies Who Knows That, and it says Upload to YouTube. You can click this button, and what it's going to do is it's going to prompt you to enter your YouTube login details. Now I'm not going to bother doing that right now, but what you would do is you would put in your username and password, you have to have a YouTube account and as soon as you hit login or YouTube it would allow you to upload your video through MovieZoo's user interface. The actual process of it going to YouTube and then appearing on MovieZoo.com can take a few hours um, so if you don't see it right away then uh, check back later on. And in a nutshell that is, an a that is the overview of the animation system animate and passes, animate in moods and follow the timeline as it's written here prepare, direct, tools, video and finally upload